Hello and welcome to Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, I'm going to talk about three adjustment layers in Photoshop, the invert, posterize, and threshold. These are the adjustment layers that you probably least likely to use in your projects, but still they can create very interesting effects. First of all, the invert adjustment does exactly what you would expect from it to do. It inverts all the colors. So if I click on this, you can see its effect. And the only reason why I would use this as an adjustment layer is that because this way I can use a blend mode together with it. So I can use, for example, hue, which can create very interesting effects. So that was before and this is after. Or I can play around, I can set it to color or I can set it to overlay or multiply and so on and so forth. So that's the invert adjustment layer. But let's have a look at the other two adjustments. The first of all, threshold. Now, the threshold adjustment converts grayscale or color images to high contrast black and white images. And you can specify a certain level as a threshold. So you can see here we have these levels and the histogram. And all pixels lighter than the threshold are converted to white, all pixels darker are converted to black. So you set that balance between white and black and it basically gives you a one bit uh, image which will only include whites and blacks. So it's, there's no grayscale in it at all. Now, what is it useful for? Well, first of all, you can use it to identify the black and white points for color correction. So if I go all the way here to the left, the last remaining spots will be the darkest uh, colors or darkest details in the image. So that should be the black point. And I can set a sample point on that with the uh, sampler tool, the color sampler tool. So let me just show that to you. If I go all the way down, I can click here and that point, uh, sorry, not with the eyedropper tool, with the color sampler tool. I can just click on that and that will be the black point and then I can go all the way up and then the brightest details will be these here. So I can check those two. And obviously this image is a little bit overexposed. So there are some parts which are completely white. So they are clipped colors here. It shows me in RGB values that they are all the highest intensity. So that means it's completely white in those details. So maybe I might want to go a bit further below and then just set a sampler accordingly. But apart from identifying these two main uh, points for color sampling, you can just simply use it to create a silhouette of the original image. And uh, you can do it together with masking as well, which might make it even more interesting. So if I'm just going to clear all my sample points and uh, I'm going to create, first of all, a selection, which I already created before. So let me just go to select, load selection, and I have the snowboarder saved as a selection. And then if I go to the adjustments and choose threshold, and you can see it's very interesting uh, effect when you have the original colored background and you have the silhouette or this uh, threshold version of the snowboarder. So you can always play around with these options as well. And of course, you can still change the levels or the value for the threshold. But then what you can also do is to use this, uh, the threshold, for a layered effect. Uh, which can be used, for example, for screen printing, for which you have to separate out the various colors in order to make a stencil that you will ultimately use to print each color individually. So that's another use of threshold, but that can also be achieved with posterize. And you will see that these two adjustments are quite similar, but actually I would think that uh, posterize is better if you want to create that layered uh, color effect, which can be used for screen printing. So let me just uh, delete this now. So let's go back to adjustments and choose posterize. Now in posterize, once again, you can see what happens. This adjustment lets you to specify the number of tonal levels or brightness values. And for each channel in an image, it then maps the pixels to the closest matching levels. 
So for example, choosing two tonal level, which I have now here, in an RGB image gives you six colors. It will give two for red, two for green, and two for blue. So this adjustment is also useful for creating these kind of special effects. As I said, it can be used for screen printing. So let me show you how that works. First of all, what I'm going to do is to set it to the level that I want to use. So maybe we can have four levels or let's see if I go just one below three levels, even three levels can work or actually even two levels would work, but probably in three levels already the snowboarder is separated more from the background, but we can play with more colors if we want to. I'm going to keep three levels. And now what I'm going to do is to make selections on these colors and I'm actually going to change these colors. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to do a color range selection. And then I just have to click on a color which I want to change. So for example, if I want to change this uh, cyan color and maybe also include that purple color, I just shift clicked on it. And then on this new layer, I have a selection. I can fill them in with a color and let's just make it crazy, make it turn it into something completely different, a dark red. So I'm going to fill that in with dark red. Then I can create another new layer. So I just simply create new layer here. And then again, I'm going to use the color range. Now I'm going to make a selection of the white uh, details. I click on OK and then I can decide what I want to fill in these. Again, maybe I'm going to fill in these um, blue colors there. Or once we created a fill and we change our mind, we can always come back to it. The best is, I think, to lock transparency for these layers. And then it's very easy to change their colors. You just pick a new color. So let's say I'm on, in, on this blue one. I pick a color, maybe purple or pink, and I can fill it in quickly without um, overwriting the original area which I covered in that layer. And of course, you can also use hue saturation adjustment. In this case, I wouldn't use an adjustment layer because it's just simply one color in this layer. So it's not really important to keep it as an adjustment layer. So I would use the keyboard shortcut, Command or Control U. And then changing the saturation or hue, I can play around with the color. I'm probably going to keep it a bit more monochromatic. That might make it a bit more interesting. So I'm going to turn this into orange. And then we can again create a new layer and uh, once again use uh, the color range. I use the keyboard shortcut Control Alt Shift O or Command Alt Shift O on the Mac. I'm going to select the black colors and I'm going to click on OK. And then this one maybe I fill in with white. But of course, if I want to um, keep these the darkest, then I can once again just pick a color, maybe I'm going to pick this red color in the background and just then change it to a darker red like that and then lock the transparency of the layer and fill it in. By the way, filling in um, with a selected foreground or background color, you can use the keyboard shortcut. Old backspace will fill in with the foreground color. Command or control backspace will fill in with the background color. So as you can see, we already uh, filled in the biggest uh, blocks of colors, but there are also a couple of smaller areas here. Maybe we can use those rest uh, details, the rest of the details, to put some highlights on the image, maybe with white. And in that case, the easiest is to create another new layer. Just keep that at the bottom and fill that in completely with white. So if I switch to white, I can fill that in completely with white. So if these other layers are the same, then as you can see, the white will fill in those details. But maybe it's also uh, was quite cool uh, the way it looked if we fill it in with uh, black or we can try to fill it in with, with uh, orange or we can try also the red color and maybe even this dark red one. So each of these can look quite interesting. And you can tell that it's very easy to work with these layers from this point on. So I can make changes very quickly and easily. And I can also use now a separate hue saturation adjustment layer. 
with which I can very quickly change the hue of this whole effect. So once I created this layered uh, posterize effect, then I can use a separate hue saturation adjustment layer to play around with the hue or even the saturation. So I can create a bit more matte colors or much more vibrant colors and so on and so forth. So once again, even though these look like very simple and not really useful adjustment layers, the invert, posterize and threshold, they can still be used for lots of interesting effects and also useful things like color correction. And that's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. I hope you found this useful and I hope you will join me next time as well here on Tuts Plus. Thanks a lot and see you next time.